All right. Well, <clears throat> welcome to Virtual Application Assistance Day. Um, my name is Belinda. I am the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Accessibility Coordinator with Craft Lake City. Mads, you're muted. <laughs> I'm muted. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Um, hi, I'm Mads. I'm the Artisans and Programs Coordinator here at Craft Lake. All right. And um, so we are very thankful for um, everyone who's joining with us today. Um, we are recording this, so it will go on YouTube. So that way, those who cannot make it right now can still um, get the information for their applications as well. Um, this is meant to be a free form discussion. And so please feel free to ask any questions for those watching this on YouTube. Feel free to um, put any questions in the comment section as well. Um, and we will get, we'll answer them as fast as we can. Um, if there's anything that you would like to email us, um, we can get the emails from info at craftlakecity.com or artisan coordinator at craftlakecity.com. Um, both of those we can respond to as fast as possible. And let's get going. There we go. All right. So just some quick notes. Um, we ask that everybody mute their microphone. Um, so keep it muted so that way everyone can hear the presentation. Um, but also, um, if you have any questions, like um, you can put it in the chat or there's like a hand raise feature on this as well. Um, captions can be turned on at the bottom of the screen using um, the live transcripts option. And then if you have any questions, like I said, it's meant to be interactive. So please don't be shy. Um, we want to make sure that anyone who is participating in this, um, this event can feel confident as far as when applying. Um, but like I said earlier, you're free to ask us any questions or email us any questions even after the event. Um, and then we will send out a survey afterwards um, just to kind of see how we can improve um, this event so that way we can just make it better and better each time. Awesome. All right. Well, if you're, you're tuning into this video or this live discussion, um, you're probably interested in applying to the DIY Festival. Um, but just in case you haven't heard of Craft Lake City or are not sure what we do outside of the DIY Festival. We wanted to tell you a little bit about ourselves. So Craft Lake City is a 501c3 nonprofit organization with the mission to educate, promote, and inspire local artisans and elevate the by elevating the creative culture of Utah arts community through science, technology, and art. And we enact that mission throughout our community in a couple of different ways. We do year-round um, DIY workshop programming with a couple of different partners throughout the community. Currently, we work with Alibi Bar in Place, the Natural History Museum of Utah, and uh, PBS Utah to host in-person DIY workshops. We do lots of different topics. Some fun classes that are coming up include weaving, watercolor painting, and empanada making. Um, so you can always check out the schedule for those workshops um, on the education tab on our website or at craftlakecity.com slash workshops. We also have a few different community programs, um, such as our placat programming, um, including celebration of the hand and local voices. So these are some small scale billboards that are downtown on 300 South. Um, we love to work with local artists and um, mission driven organizations to get their um, mission and message shown to all of the pedestrians and you know people that are downtown. Um, it's a really great program. And so if you're interested in spreading your message with those uh, little billboards, feel free to reach out to us at artisan coordinator at craftlakecity.com. We'd love to hear from you and work with you. We also do pop-up uh, tattoo parlors with local artisans where we will have a booth at your local event. We do, um, we've done fun things like the NBA All-Star event or Kilby Block Party where we do our pop-up tent and have local artisans do Sharpie tattoos um, for a very low cost where we split that cost um, so that it's a fun, um, way for the artisans to make money and also um, represent Craft Lake at um, local events. And then we also have our Youth Artisan Entrepreneur Program, which is a really fun program where we partner with local um, Title I schools um, to bring free arts education and opportunities to those youths 
uh, during the school year. And then we also encourage them to continue making art throughout the summer so that they can participate at DIY Fest at Kid Row, which is a really fun one day pop up market at the DIY Festival for artisans who are 18 years and younger. It's one of the highlights of the festival and I really recommend you come, coming to check it out. We also have a handful of large scale events that we do every year. Um, a couple of them would include the annual Craft Lake City Holiday Market presented by Google Fiber, which is in its sixth year this year. We host that up at the Ogden Union Station on the first weekend of December. That's such a fun and cozy event and a great way to get your holiday shopping done local. And then this year we just um, released the previously pre-existing and now um, re re-existing, I suppose, um, annual Graphic City Letter West, um, which is a conference for, every, for people who love hand lettering. So anything from calligraphy, sign painting, even tattoo art and graffiti art, um, this is a conference for you where we have post workshops, panel discussions, um, and really just try to bolster the um, hand lettering community. So we're excited to be hosting that annually, annually moving forward and can't wait to see that program grow. And then of course, our flagship event, the annual Craft Lake City DIY Festival presented by Harmons, which is what we're here to talk about the application for today. This is such a wonderful and exciting event. Um, it's the largest um, local centric makers market and festival in Utah, um, hosted at the State Fair Park the second weekend of August every year. Um, so today we're going to talk about the application process for this really exciting event. There we go. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I couldn't get that unmuted. <laughs> um, so as Mad said, um, we're all here to kind of discuss the application process for the um, DIY Fest, but a lot of this can kind of carry over into holiday market, um, <clears throat> like a lot of the information. So we'll kind of go over everything. Um, and you can kind of keep it in mind for if you are interested in the holiday market application. So in this um, kind of Q&A virtual application assistance day, we're going to kind of go over these topics, the who, what, when, where, why, how, as far as the DIY festival, um, just hopefully providing all the information to answer any questions you may start out with. Um, such as like how to apply, what the application process looks like, um, different options within your application. Um, we also have our inclusion programming and application fee waivers that we can discuss. Um, and then we'll just kind of walk through the um, different parts of the website that will assist in the whole process. All right. So what is the DIY Festival? It is the largest maker's market in the state. And it's an opportunity for Utahns to shop local and support small business owners. Um, not only that, though, but it's an event for artisans to also network, um, share what they're proud of, which is their art and like a big expression of themselves. And it helps build relationships with other makers, patrons and um, different clients that you may come across. Um, it is at the Utah State Fair Park. Um, it's the second weekend in August, so this year's August 9th through 11th, um, and the public, what's on this. Um, when, if, if, and when accepted, you'll receive load in information. And so like your timing may be different just by a little bit. Um, who should apply? Well, Applications are open to all types of creators. Like we had stated at the front, our mission is to elevate the creative culture of Utah. And this includes STEM artists, craft food, commercial food, performers of all kind, um, kids <laughs> for our kid row. And so in a nutshell, we, we want you. We want everyone that wants to participate, that wants to show off what they've made and worked hard on. Um, and we want to help elevate your voice as well. Why you should apply that. Honestly, I think it's one of the questions that I've heard a lot, especially with commercial foodies um, being part of the food process um, is 
there's so many reasons why. One is exposure. For a lot of new artisans, they're just getting out there. And so just kind of building their brand, raising awareness on who they are. Um, and it gives them such a great network because it is one of the largest markets. And so it just allows people to kind of see them and get their foot out, get their stuff out there. Um, it's networking. It's a great way for artisans to be able to meet other artisans, find ways to collab, find new outlets of how to express their art um, in different ways, whether it's they're starting with stickers and moving on to murals. Um, there's a lot of ways that this can go. Um, another thing is feedback. A lot of artisans, they don't know what the market wants or they don't know um, outside point of views. And so getting feedback on how their art is or um, what type of setting their art would do well at, um, is, it's such a great opportunity that no one really thinks about sometimes. Um, but also getting um, like custom orders or commissions. They, a lot of people may say, oh, I really like your butterflies, but I want it like this. And so it's just, a, once again, networking and getting feedback. Um, they'll get invitations to other events or meet other uh, like galleries or stuff like that to ex expand their business line, not just in the market setting, but also um, in different types of settings, whether it's a store or like a brick and mortar store or a gallery event. Um, it allows for artisans to grow because you're some some artisans are starting out in farmers markets and now they're going to big events and maybe conventions. So it just provides the opportunity of growth. And one of the feedback um, I've gotten a lot going through surveys is just it feels like summer camp sometimes because the more you come, the more you network, the more you see your friends. Um, that you've made and your booth mates and your neighbors and stuff. And they're like, it feels like summer camp because it's in the summer and I get to see my friends again. So everybody has fun from volunteers and staff to artisans. And we, we try to make it such a fun event that you walk away feeling so happy. All right. So um, how to apply, we're going to kind of go over getting the navigation and the website um, and then we'll come back to this slide. Let me, oh. here we go. All right, Mads, can you see the website? Okay, perfect. All right, so this is when you go to craftlakecity.com. Um, right up here, we have DIY Fest. This is the same way to apply for any of our events, just, um, heads up we have holiday market when those applications launch it'll look very similar to this with the drop down um, if you click diy fest um, that will take you to our main diy fest page and just right at the top we have apply now or if you scroll too far it's also right here um, but we also have our different rules and regulations as far as just trying to provide as much context as possible. We do believe in being transparent and over communicating. And so we want to make sure we provide that to everyone who is applying. Um, so that way there's no surprises. Um, but if you will scroll back up, <laughs> if you click apply now, um, it'll take you to the application main page um, and you'll click start your application. And this will take you to creating an account um, if you have applied with us in the past, but have not started your application this year, you will have to recreate um, your account as the logins do not carry over in the next year. Um, but if you are coming back to log back into, let's say you started your application already, um, you'll just go over here and log in with your um, with in, into your account and it'll take you right back to where you left off on your application. Um, and sometimes it's you finished everything, but you haven't gotten the photos or stuff like that. Um, and so uh, this is the best way to kind of go back to where you are. Um, and if you have any questions or you're experiencing any issues, please reach out to us. Um, funny enough, we're also tech support. So <laughs> we are happy to help any way that we can. Um, in the past, we've even sat down and just gone through the whole application with someone. So we, we are very... Um, dedicated to trying to help all of our artisans um, get what they need. So, and I'm going to need this page in just a minute again. So let's go back to our presentation. And sorry if that was really fast. <laughs> um, you're going to 
decide which application type you are applying for, um, answer the questions, you'll upload photos. Um, now these photos will, um, if accepted into the DIY Fest, those photos will be used for your exhibitor profile. So make sure they're a great representation of what you are going to be putting out there. Um, and we'll talk about photos um, a little bit later, um, but ever, everything you put in that application will, um, as far as your bio and your photos will be used to best represent yourself. So make sure that what you put out there is what you want others to see. Um, now the application is considered complete once you've paid the application fee, which is $25. Um, and there's a, like a terms and conditions. So you'll, you'll sign that and pay the fee and then um, we'll receive the application on our end. And I will turn the time over for Mads to go over application type. Sweet, yeah. So as you kind of saw when Belinda showed what it looks like when you click on that start application button, the very first thing is to decide which application type you are applying for. Um, so they're broken down into the artisan and vintage application, the craft food application, commercial foods application, performers, STEM, and Kid Row. So artisan and vintage will um, entail all different types of art. It's not until later in, I think it's the next page or the page after your initial kind of um, contact information details on the actual application where you'll select the actual like category of art that you make. So any sort of like created wares that you're going to be selling at the festival, that will be the artisan and vintage um, category. Craft food is going to be very similar to that, but with um, pre-packaged food items that are prepared in advance of the festival. So things like jams or hot sauces or um, salts and spices, things like that, items like that that are pre-made and then brought to sell as like individual units at the festival are considered craft food. Um, commercial food is anything that's going to be cooked on site or um, prepared or served on site, especially with regards to a high volume um, of attendees. So these would be um, people like food trucks or um, smaller kind of snacks that need to be kept heated and um, are intended to be eaten at the festival. Belinda is our festival food um, manager. So she's gonna be the point of contact for anybody who ends up qualifying as a commercial food um, vendor. Belinda, are there any other points that um, our craft foodies or commercial foodies need to keep in mind when they're making the distinction on which application they need to pick? Yeah, um, so one of the things after talking to the uh, health department and kind of deciding what would be considered um, craft food, because it is a really niche title, craft food versus commercial food. Um, one of the key components of that is the spoilage. So if you have a food item, let's say like pastries that they have to remain cold um, if they heat up or like ice cream, for example. Yeah, they're prepackaged, but you kind of have to eat it on site or it's just going to melt in your bag. Um, those are considered commercial food just because um, you like if they need to be kept hot or cold, um, they are then in anticipated to be consumed on site. And so that was one thing that we kind of had to very solidify this year because um, in the past it was like, oh, maybe. And um, even the health department was like, well, there's some gray areas. So um, after working with the health department, that is what they're categorizing it. So we're kind of following in term for that. Awesome. Thank you so much for the insight on that topic, Belinda. Um, and if you are a commercial food vendor or a craft food vendor, and now you're kind of wondering, well, what category am I going to um, fall into? Please feel free to send us an email or give us a call at our office. We're very, we're more than happy to help you kind of work through that categorization and everything. Um, another application type is gonna be our performers and similar to artisan and vintage, it'll have you select um, which kind of category of performance you are applying to do at the DIY festival. Um, we love to have local bands playing their, their um, original music at the festival, um, any other kind of interesting musical acts, as well as dance troops. We will have like large groups who perform on stages as well as like 
smaller groups that are kind of roaming busker type performers. So if you have something interesting and fun that you would love to see at the DIY festival, we would encourage you to apply. Um, STEM applications are going to be similar to our other applications, but with a focus on science and um, technology education. We've had video game developers, um, the Aggie Drone Academy, we partner with a lot and they come and fly drones. So if you have something science-based that maybe you're not necessarily selling an item that you've created, maybe you are, but it's more of a STEM sort of um, item rather than um, a kind of traditional artistic medium, you would probably be a great fit for our STEM um, STEM building. We have a whole building dedicated to STEM at the festival, which is such a fun um, fun place to visit. Um, and then Kid Row applications are going to be similar, and that's just for any artisan who is 18 years or younger. Um, we'd encourage you to apply. It's like I mentioned earlier, it's a one day pop-up event for just a couple of hours on Saturday, and it is one of the more like beloved aspects of the festival. Everybody gets really excited about Kid Row, so um, encourage your kids or any kids that you know who love to create to apply. Um, a couple of basic um, exhibitor requirements for the DIY festival are that um, you must be a Utah resident. We really try to focus on uplifting specifically Utah's creative culture. Um, there are a lot of other festivals that will bring in artisans from um, out of state and we love to see those festivals, uh, but DIY Fest is specifically a space for our local community uh, makers. So even if you are from out of state, but you've lived in Utah, you still count. Um, so just consider that you must be living in Utah currently to qualify. Um, and then items must be handmade or designed by you, the artisan. Um, we love to really focus on the kind of hands-on DIY, you're the creator of the of the product. Um, we also have a lot of options for kind of the in-between um, kind of artistic realms as well, which I'll get into a little bit when I mentioned the, um, oh, actually that's on this slide that I was going to talk about it. So I'll just talk about it right now. Um, for example, our um, vintage curators, maybe you're not making the, the items yourself, but you are curating a um, group of specific items that is your, your business. We love to see our um, vintage vendors as well. There is an option to note on your application when you're selecting the category of your art versus um, vintage and also reworked vintage goods so that we can kind of know who is more curating just um, vintage pieces versus who is maybe finding vintage pieces and then um, changing them, sewing on them, painting on them, and kind of making it their own little twist. Um, another category that I wanted to mention that kind of falls outside of the um, all items must be handmade would be our world market category. Um, this is a category for artisans who maybe they don't play a massive part in the design of the items, but they do source them from um, like ethically sourced places um, other than Utah to create kind of a specific store and um, quantity of items. You know, if you are bringing in um, different like cultural goods from a, another country where you work with somebody who creates handmade items and then you're bringing them in and selling them as your business, uh, that would be considered in the world market category. And those are definitely welcome to apply as well. You'll just wanna make sure that you note that distinction on your application. Sweet. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit more into the details. Um, Belinda mentioned the basic process of how the application kind of flows, but there are a couple of different um, questions on the application that I wanted to just double check that we were going over today. Uh, we talked about the application types. Um, that would be the overall type of application that you're picking on, right, as you're creating your, um, as you're creating your application um, profile. Then it'll ask you some contact and business information. Um, and then the second part that I wanted to make sure that we go over is the category of product or service. Like I just mentioned, there's a bunch of different categories and on the application, it'll allow you to choose two different categories, your primary category and your secondary category. So if you're looking at the products that you make and you're wondering, well, 
I do mostly paintings, but sometimes I'll sculpt and have a couple of ceramics that I also offer. That's wonderful, <laughs> incredible. We love to see people who are multi multi-talented and we want to be able to highlight all of that there. Um, so just that we're aware of the content that you'll be bringing to the festival, you would mark artwork, like 2D artwork as your main, your primary category, and then um, sculpture or ceramics as your uh, secondary category. This just allows us to know what you're gonna be bringing to the festival a little bit easier. Um, the application will ask if you've applied before, just so that we can keep track of how many new artisans are at the festival. Um, it'll then have you request a booth option as far as size and um, the number of days, which is what I will be breaking down in a little more in depth um, on the next slide, because there are a lot of different options for participation. Um, and sometimes it can be a little overwhelming trying to decipher all of the different um, possibilities for your DIY festival presentation or ex exhibition. So I'll go over those on the next slide. Um, another note that we wanted to check was that the application will ask if you are going to need electricity for your booth. Um, so at the DIY festival, we do not provide electricity um, or allow people to connect to the building's electricity without paying $150 um, electricity fee during the application process. This is because at getting adequate electricity to a lot of different artisans um, is quite taxing on the building and is just a little bit of a logistical nightmare. Um, so we do intentionally make that cost um, pretty high to kind of discourage it. What we do encourage is for you to bring um, pre-charged battery packs um, or battery operated um, lights or anything like that. Something that you can, that is already charged that you can use to charge your phone um, or power your point of sale or anything like that. Um, but if you are thinking that, you know, you know, let's say that you sell like refurbished lamps and you need electricity to be able to really showcase um, what your product does, then we just ask that you pay that $150 electricity and we will get it set up for you um, upon your arrival or before your arrival so that you are ready to be able to plug into an outlet when you get to the festival. The application will also ask some demographic information. We just wanted to let you know that we collect that information as a nonprofit for grant reporting requirements. That information does not get um, included in your jurying to be part of the festival. It is purely just for statistics um, for reporting purposes. So um, feel free to answer those however you need to. There are options for um, to not necessarily respond if you aren't comfortable, but just for full clarity, that doesn't play a part into whether you will be accepted into the um, festival or not. The last part of the application that is really essential that we'll be going over a little bit um, in another two slides, I believe, um, are the photos. Um, the application will ask for five photos of your items as well as like a logo or um, kind of main focal point photo. As Belinda mentioned, um, upon your acceptance into the DIY festival, we take those photos and create an exhibitor profile on our website so that people can peruse what artists will be at the festival this year. So that main photo, that's the last photo that you'll attach will be kind of your brand photo. That's the main tile on our website. And then the other five photos are included to let viewers and potential attendees to see what you're gonna be bringing to the festival. Um, these five photos are also the only thing that our jurors will see when they're thinking about um, who's gonna be brought into the festival for the year. So making sure that those photos really encompass your brand, your personality, the um, quality of the, of the content that you're gonna be bringing to the festival is really important. Like that, um, example that I mentioned earlier, if you predominantly do paintings, but every once in a while you kind of sculpt, we'd want to make sure that you have photos of your paintings as well as those sculptures, um, but maybe don't have all of the pictures of your sculptures because then we wouldn't know about the paintings that you're bringing. So just making sure that it's an accurate representation of the um, content that you're going to bring to the festival is really important. Um, and that last note is just reiterating what Belinda already mentioned, that the application fee is the last step of the 
um, application. You can complete everything, but it won't be fully submitted until you go through that PayPal link to um, submit the $25 application fee for the festival. Sweet. All right. So now we're going to go over some of the different options when it asks for um, your booth options on the application. So the DIY festival is a three day festival from Friday to Sunday. Um, and we offer plenty of different booth size options for this festival as well. So there are five by 10 spaces, which are going to be um, five feet deep by 10 feet across. There are 10 by 10 spaces, which are the most abundant at the DIY festival, um, which are 10 feet deep and 10 feet across. And then there are a couple of different options for whether you need more space or less space than that. So one option is a shared 10 by 10 space. Unfortunately, we can't do shared five by 10 spaces. We just find that that's not quite enough room for artisans to be able to fully display their items. Um, but if you have another friend who ha also has a small business and you'd really love to be able to be in the same booth as them, um, you can split a 10 by 10 space with them. So, or even if you, you know, have a friend that you're kind of just getting started and you don't have, don't feel like you have enough um, content to fill up a full 10 by 10 booth. That's a great option for um, kind of getting your pals that are also in the DIY scene and having a really fun time at the DIY festival. Um, alternatively, we also offer double booth options for people who have just lots of content and are really excited to bring everything they've ever made to the DIY festival. Um, we can offer 10 by 20 booths um, as well. Let me find my notes to make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh yeah, as I mentioned, um, the DIY festival is a three-day festival, Friday through Saturday. Um, we love to have people there for the full weekend, um, but we also know that some people aren't able to uh, participate on Sundays or maybe they're only free on Sundays due to their work schedule. Um, so we offer a couple of different participation options as far as how long you can be at the DIY festival. Um, most often people will do a three-day participation. You start off on Friday and then are here all the way until Sunday. Um, we also offer a Friday, Saturday option if you're unavailable on Sundays um, or just that Sunday, um, Sunday only participation, as I mentioned. Um, so there will be a question on the application where you can note your preference for uh, how many days you would like to participate. There's also a question asking your preference on whether you'd like to be indoor or outdoor, because we have lots of different buildings and different spaces set up outside in the Fair Park um, to accommodate both indoor and outdoor. These are preferences, but if you have any um, accessibility requests regarding whether you're indoors or outdoors, because it is hosted in August, we know that it can be hot. Um, please list those accessibility questions in the accessibility portion of the uh, application. We try to accommodate these requests as much as possible. Um, but as far as just preferences go, there are also options to mention that, oh, I don't mind if I'm indoor or outdoor, um, or I don't mind if I participate one day or three days. Uh, there are plenty of options to tell us like your restrictions and um, you know your ideal participation but also options to let you know let us know that you'd just love to participate in any regard um, so something to be aware of when you're receiving acceptance letters for the diy festival please double check your um, acceptance email to make sure that you're noting what size your booth is and how many days you've been accepted for like I mentioned, we try as hard as we can to get you your ideal situation for the DIY festival, but there are just limited numbers of booths, especially for five by tens for the um, DIY fest. We have lots and lots of 10 by tens, but those five by tens get picked up extra quick. So um, there is a possibility that you will be offered a space that you weren't necessarily signing up for. So please keep that in mind and um, always feel free to reach out to us and respond to those emails. Um, asking questions and seeing if there's any wiggle room with those um, those acceptance emails. Cool. All right. We're circling back to photos. Um, as I mentioned, the photos are such an essential portion of 
your DIY festival application. So we just wanted to make sure that you had a couple of resources to feel really confident in your ability to take the best photos um, for your application. First off, we wanted to mention that next week on March 19th, we will be hosting an in-person version of this Application Assistance Day event where we will have a um, professional photographer available to help you take photos of your items. So that's gonna be hosted at the um, Salt Lake City Public Library. Linda will be giving some more details about that event here at the end of the um, at the end of the presentation so that you know where to sign up for that event. We would really love to see you there. Even if you are attending live today or you've watched this video on YouTube, it's still great to come to the in-person application assistance day to get your questions answered, as well as um, take advantage of the offer of free professional photos. Even if you're not necessarily planning on attending the DIY festival or applying, um, if you're a small business and you could use a couple of photos um, for your website or for your social media and would love to get some tips and tricks from a professional photographer, we'd encourage you to sign up for Application Assistance Day next week. Um, come hang out with us and get a couple of photos taken. So when you're taking photos of your items at home, um, lighting is a pretty essential portion of taking a photo. Make sure that you've got a good light source. Natural lighting is really great in that um, it gives like a very soft, um, natural aesthetic. But if you are trying to take a photo and it's not the middle of the day or you don't have the best windows in your house, lamps can work as well. Um, just considering like the color temperature of the lamp, um, maybe thinking of the background surrounding, um, trying to get it to be even lighting. Um, sometimes you'll have to grab a lamp and kind of hold it and <laughs> move it around a little bit. Um, getting a friend to help you out with these photos can be uh, definitely an asset. Um, avoiding backlighting is another great um, tip. If you have a light behind the source or the thing that you're taking the photo of, you're not going to really be able to see the item itself. You'll mostly see the light that is surrounding the item, um, which is not going to highlight how beautiful your artwork is for the application. Um, so make sure that you've got lighting that is actively hitting um, your item. Shadows are something to be aware of as well. Um, if you have something that has a shadow through the middle, it might lose some of the finer details that you're so proud of, of making with your artwork. Um, one tip that I wanted to share with you guys uh, that is such a simple tip with lighting in your photos is that if you're having trouble with those shadows or lighting is feeling too harsh because the lamp that you're using is sh just shining too brightly, a great trick is to just grab a piece of paper and Oh, the, the green screen is making it so funny. A piece of paper. Nope, that's okay. There we go. Um, any sort of piece of paper, like a, a light, white piece of paper will reflect light really well. So you could use a large piece of paper or even a small one um, and just experiment with like angling your lamp or light source and angling that piece of paper. You can often get it so that it will bounce a little bit of extra light onto your item so that it's kind of taking care of some of those shadows that may be cast. It's such a quick and um, fun little <laughs> tip to kind of be trying to, you know, I don't know, makes you feel like a real professional photographer, I suppose. <laughs> um, another aspect of photos is the consistency to make sure that your shots are stable. Um, a simple tripod um, can be really helpful, but also if you're taking, photos on a phone, sometimes just leaning it up against a, a piece of furniture or kind of smushing it between two uh, bookends on your from your bookshelf or something like that. Get creative. Try to find something that will hold your, um, your phone stable so that you're getting the crispest, cleanest um, photo that you can. And then as I mentioned, mentioned, considering the background of the image is also important. We don't want to be um, focusing accidentally on what's going on in the background. You know, maybe you've got a really exciting sculpture that you weren't intending to bring to the <laughs> DIY festival that's behind your item and people, it's going to distract from the actual item that you're highlighting. So as much as you can, like the examples that are shown here on this slide, try to get a clean background. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a full um, photography backdrop. It can also kind of play into the look of your item as well if you'd like to kind of stage 
a little space to take um, your photos. But what we wanna just make sure is that the item itself is the highlight of the photo. On the application, oh. we'll kick it over. Oh, did we freeze for a second and I, I spoke over so. you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Take it away, Belinda. No worries. I was going to say thank you so much for the photography tips because I like from my experience and in multiple in person, there's always a lot of questions on that. So, and every photographer is like, find your light. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks so much. Um, we'll just kind of go over important dates and deadlines, and then we'll go into the best part, which is scholarships and our inclusion programs. <laughs> just kidding. I mean, it is, but that I'm biased. <laughs> so important dates and deadlines, um, like Mads had said, our in-person application assistance day is on March 19th. Uh, so next week, um, and you can register for that. Um, it is open to the public. Um, and it's at the Salt Lake City Public Library. And I'll, I'll show you how to get to this, um, this page specifically in just a minute. Um, and then the DIY Fest applications close on Monday, April 1st. And we announce our lineup on May 1st. So about a month later. And then if you have any questions at all, feel free to email us at artisancoordinator at craftlikecity.com. Or if you can't remember, that because sometimes long email addresses I forget info at craftlakecity.com both of those will get you right to us and we can answer those questions as fast as possible so my favorite part mainly because I'm biased and this is what I'm over is our inclusion programming um, and so I'll just go over each part and um, if you have any ideas of um, those who could participate definitely let us know um, the first one is our Sponsored Entrepreneurs Program. Um, this is a great way for any new artisans who are just trying to figure out where they're going um, with their products. Um, they can come to the festival, shadow a well-seasoned entrepreneur, um, get some tips and tricks from them, ask as many questions as they want, um, sort of like a mentorship in a way. They are shadowing that artisan's um, booth. And so they're not presenting their own art, but they are learning a lot without having to like financially make that investment and learn the hard way. Um, so it's a great way to just kind of figure out if this is the scene you want for your products. Um, next is our sponsored families program. Um, this is a great way that we want everyone to have a great time at the festival, no matter what your background is, as far as like your um, economic background or um, like how your family's put together anything. We want everyone to come and have a great time. So we have this program open to, and it's kind of a registration base. So families will register. Um, we provide tickets to the festival, food vouchers, drink vouchers, craft and STEM vouchers, merch vouchers, you name it. We want you to, we want these families to have a full experience without having to worry about the costs. Um, and we want them to just build those memories um, at a great way to just introduce that creative outlet to especially young kids and stuff. Um, another one is our artisan scholarship and mentor program. Um, <clears throat> and I'll go over that in the next slide. And then we have our application assistance and support, which I'll also go over um, in the next bit. All right, so our Scholar and Mentor Program, um, this is such a great opportunity for new artisans coming into the festival circuit, especially if you're a first time um, exhibitor with us at Craft Lake City and the DIY Festival. Um, this includes networking opportunities, business education, group training, waived booth fees, um, mentorships with very well-seasoned, well-established artisans, um, in the last set, we had artisans who were doing success, like this was their sole income. They went from trying to start out to this is their full-time job. And so they're able to do online sales, have their social media presence. So it's people well-established. Um, and they are also exhibiting at the DIY Fest. So they're there to help those on this program. The mentors are there to help them 
before, during, and after the festival. And it's just kind of building that bond, making sure that your com the new um, scholars are comfortable at the festival. They have all their questions answered. And one awesome thing is they work on that booth development. So as they're building what their booth is going to look like and designing that, that way when they go into the festival, it is they're presenting themselves in the best way possible. Um, those categories and are it's kind of an umbrella. Everyone under the umbrella gets to part within this program gets to participate in those um, those different activities that is included. We have our artisan scholarship, which is for low income artisans. We have our LGBTQ plus and our artability scholarship. Um, the art artability scholarship um, and the LGBTQ plus scholarship. Um, have a focus in the community of LGBTQ plus or the disabled community. With that being said, we want anyone that their art elevates the voices within that community. They themselves are part of that community. They are an ally of that community. We want anyone who can help raise awareness and elevate those voices to apply. Um, they always say it takes a village. And I feel like within the different communities, it's so important that we work together and kind of help elevate those voices. And so, um, like I said earlier, the artisans who end up being accepted within this program are paired with a local um, artisan mentor um, who have a history, they're well-established, they have so much to offer, wealth of knowledge. Um, and they will learn about promotion, sales, customer service, lead generation, booth display, financial literacy, um, and so much more because they also get to participate in the business academy, which we have a lot of like branding and um, branding and um, contracts as far as um, kind of growing within the different um, licensing kind of realm as that grows within the society as well. Um, those applications close with regular applications on April 1st. Um, and then, so you will need to complete the standard application as well as the scholarship application. Um, the scholarship application is free to apply um, and feel free if you feel that you qualify for multiple communities, feel free to apply to all or any of those communities that you feel, um, like I said, you are raising um, awareness on and elevating those voices or you are a part of that community. Um, and then we have our DIY festival application support. Um, so we have our application assistance day, March 19th, and then we have our fee support. So with application assistance day, kind of as Mads had said before, um, it's free to anyone in the public, even if you're not applying this year, um, but you just want product photos, please come and get those product photos. Um, learn any tips or tricks. I ask a lot of the um, photographers anything that I can do at home. And I think it's their insight is phenomenal. So get professional photos. Um, if you have any questions or need any assistance on um, just within the application process, because sometimes there's a question that you're worried it may, like what you put there may um, be a question to those who are going through the application. We're happy to walk through that with you or even if you're nervous or you need assistance with doing the application, we can literally go through each question with you and make sure you feel confident in your application that you're submitting. Um, and then the application fee support um, for, we understand that sometimes like market season and um, like convention season doesn't start till later. And so we don't want that application fee to be a barrier um, to entry. And so if um, for anyone who may need the application fee waived, um, please email us at info at craftlakecity.com and just let us know um, with a statement of need, just let us know why it is um, that you need that fee waived. Um, and then we'll get back to you and um, make sure you're um, just kind of let you know the status of that. Um, it is first come first serve. So if we do run out of those fee waivers, uh, we'll let you know and give you a heads up. But we're also really happy to try to see how we can help. We, uh, we are very passionate about our mission to elevate the creative community. And so we try really hard to make sure we can do that. Um, 
All right. And so if you have any questions on our inclusion programming, um, or if you know of anyone that, um, like if you're part of an organization or you know anyone that could benefit from um, sponsored entrepreneurs, sponsored families, um, scholarship and mentor program, um, please reach out to us. Let us know. We do want to expand. We have so many awesome resources that we'd love to be able to provide to various entrepreneurs and it's free. It's free for those involved. Um, and so it's, you know what I mean? They don't have to worry about paying to be a part of the sponsored families or sponsored entrepreneur programs or the scholarship. So we just want to make sure we can, um, provide those resources out there. Um, and then if we have any questions, feel free to let us know. Um, but while we're here, let me go ahead and uh, pull up the website and I can kind of walk through getting to different parts. Um, so when well, you Linda, go to... really quickly, oh, yeah. one thing that came to mind earlier <laughs> that, um, that I just wanted to make sure that we addressed before, um, just as one of the frequently asked questions that we get from people when they're filling out their applications, um, a lot of times we'll get uh, feedback about either the photos not uploading properly on your application or sometimes the uh, link from getting from the application to the port part where you pay the application fee. Sometimes that presents a little bit of a challenge. And one thing I just wanted to note for anybody who is um, planning to apply and might enc encounter that, oftentimes that can be an issue if you're trying to apply on your mobile device, on a phone or a tablet. Um, we've, we've found that frequently if you switch to a desktop or a laptop, those problems will resolve. Um, oftentimes with the photos, um, the application doesn't take the iPhone um, photo file type that's like HEIC, I believe. It has to be a JPEG, um, or I believe PNGs can also be uploaded, but JPEGs are the safest. So sometimes if you're trying to upload things on your phone, it won't work correctly. So just wanted to let anybody know if they're encountering some issues with their application, please try going onto a browser on a laptop or a desktop computer, and that might solve the problem. But if you encounter any of those issues like that, please give us an email at info at craftlikecity.com. Cool. Thanks, Belinda. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Because um, I feel like with commercial food, I don't get to see that very often. So, <laughs> um, and with applications, um, we do not, they're not accepted on a rolling basis except for commercial food. So every artisan goes through the same process. Um, and then they are all officially announced on May 1st. So um, nobody's getting like early announcements or anything. Um, so please don't fret if you don't hear anything like April 15th, everyone will hear on May 1st. Um, so uh, just kind of helping out with the website, um, just any questions or anything. Um, if you go to craftlakecity.com, this is what you'll see um, this section won't necessarily always be there, but um, if you hover over DIY Fest, you can see our um, scholarship and mentor program, community inclusion, um, and our exhibitor resources. Um, this is a great way if you have any questions, we have our FAQ, but also our prospectus, if you go over here, um, it's separated and these are hyperlinks, so it'll take you straight to your um, application category. Um, and it just provides all the information you may need, as Matt's talked about, the subcategories and mediums, photography, the processes, um, and also um, booth fees. I know that's one that a lot of people have questions about, um, but it'll just kind of lay everything out for you. So that way, if you have any questions or need to just make sure that everything's um, up on the up and up you'll be able to get those answers here. But as we've kind of stated in, uh, in over and over, like if you have any questions, we are so happy to help. So please reach out to us. Um, within our community inclusion page, um, we have the application support page. If you click learn more or learn more here, um, over here we'll have application fee support questions and then where you can sign up to do the application assistance day um, information. We also have um, 
like a video with one of our former board members and photographers about taking photos. Um, he is a great resource as he does a lot of our photos here um, for the events and in office. Um, but then also um, if you have any questions about um, like scholarship and mentor program on this page, um, this is where you can find the applications. You can either click the buttons here or at the very bottom, we have links to those um, applications as well as the other like STEM scholarships and Kid Row scholarships. And those are provided to the STEM and Kid Row applicants. Um, and it's very much a, uh, you're applying to for like a needs base as well. Um, we wanna make sure that everyone that wants to participate um, has the ability to do so. Um, we have our other programs um, as well as if you need to make any accessibility requests, um, either an application or over here under accessibility. Um, and then if you wanna see what we've done in the past, we have past festivals, you can take a look at those. Um, you can take a look at the exhibitor profiles and get an idea of what it's gonna look like. Um, yeah, I um, we kind of touched on all that. <laughs> um, and once again, please reach out to us if you have any questions. And we would like to thank you all for coming, um, whether it's on YouTube or live. Um, we appreciate being able to share our wealth of knowledge to allow for every artisan who's applying to just get their best foot forward. So thank you so much. We want to thank our sponsors. Um, Zap, Salt Lake Arts Council, um, Salt Lake County, um, <clears throat> George S. and Dolores Eccles Foundation, the Utah Arts and um, Museums, and funding from the state of Utah and the National Endowment of the Arts. Um, also, we have a lot of uh, different sponsors within our, um, our actual DIY Fest that we want to thank so much because without them, um, we would have a harder time being able to put this massive event on for those to enjoy. So thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you for attending, everybody. We can't wait to see you at the DIY Festival. Thanks.